thank him for the kingdom that has come. Thank him because you are a representative of that kingdom. Thank him because you are that kingdom in his honor. Bless him from your heart. Give him glory, give him praise, give him honor. Give him adoration. Kingdom shall reign over all the earth. Sing to the ancient of days. No man can compare to your matchless one. Kingdom shall reign. Your kingdom shall reign over all the earth. Sing to the ancient of the Sing to the ancient of the No man can come here with your matchless word. Sing to the ancient of the kingdom we are just privileged members of this kingdom whom you engrafted from our lineages and our origin you made us cross through the kingdom of darkness you brought us into the kingdom of your dear son called the Christ you brought us in you gave us a place you gave us an inheritance and you are establishing us. Lord, we pray this morning that we would be agents of forgeries of this kingdom. That this kingdom will not be contaminated or polluted in our hands. Amen. But we will further the conversations of this kingdom. Amen. That at the end of the day, you would be proud of us. Amen. And um, you would take all the glory. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' most precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Look at your neighbor this morning and say, the kingdom of God is here. The kingdom of God is here. Make sure you tell two, three people there. Glory to God. You can give the Lord an applause this morning as you get seated.
Thank you very much. You guys are old school today. I used to dress like this when I was in the choir. It was good. Glory to God. So we start a series today, and I hope you are ready for that series. It's called the Sodom Replay. We'll do that for the next three to four weeks. Um, please, it's just a teaching. I'm not getting at you or at a generation just because I want to get back, but I just want to pour out my heart. But I'm going to start with the part two. Media, I'll start with the part two of my series and not part one this morning. So I want to confuse you by starting from part two and not starting from part one. So I'll confuse us. I'll move from the harder part to the, to the simple part. So very quickly in this service, I'll talk about Sodomy, the Sodomic system. Last year we looked at the Babylonian system. Exactly a year ago, I was talking about a lot of things that happen in different countries, how NHS begins to bring out or roll out some policies and definitions around some key central terms, United Nations. For example, one of the things we looked at was the new definition of abortion. That abortion is not the killing of a baby. That they said abortion is now the eradication of a fetus before it becomes a baby. So that begins to affect your mindset to say that when you commit abortion, you are not killing a baby, you are killing a fetus. And it became a policy in the United Kingdom 2013. So um, a lot of things are happening. And I just want to, I want to point us to some signs in the end of times and has been prophesied by the Bible to help our knowledge and help us to understand a few things around us. But I'm sorry that I'm going to start with the harder part. I don't know why I'm starting with that. But I will just talk about the demonic system called Sodomy. Um, we will take our central reading from Genesis chapter 19, which I want us to read and participate together. In Genesis chapter 19 and from verse 1 to 15. Can you put it on the screen, the message version or NIV? Genesis 19 verse 1 to 15. Glory be to God. Is it open in your Bible? If you are there, say amen. Okay, let's wait a little bit. Genesis 19 verse 1 to 15. God is good. I will declare you are the only God, the only God, the only God. I will declare you are, you are the only God, the only Genesis chapter 19. I'll take it from verse 1. When I read verse 1, I'm sure you, you have your Bibles. Then you read verse 2 for me. Then we'll take it down to verse 15 together. The two angels arrived at Sodom in the evening. Lot was sitting at the city gate. I'm on message translation. And got up to welcome them, bowing before them. Let me take one and two, you go to three. Bowing before them and said, Please, my friends, come to my house. Stay the night. Wash up. You can rise early and be on your way refreshed. Then the two angels said, No, we will sleep in the street. So let me do a background there. Two angels came, they arrived at Sodom. When they arrived there, Lot saw them. Lot was a righteous man. He saw them and he said to himself that, oh, I would like to entertain them. Actually, these angels were in human forms. They were actually human beings. They were not spiritual beings. 
So the conversation says, we, no, we will sleep on the street. So number one, they sleep. Number two, they know the streets, so they are not spirits. They are human beings, you know. So to let you know how angels can function in human form. Because many times when you hear angels, you would only think that a spiritual being just appears and evaporates before you. No. Human beings as angels. Number two, not all men are equal. Not all men. When I mean men, both men and women, not all men are equal. So never treat all men equally, thinking that you are all at the same level. They are men that till I die, I will treat like an angel, though they are in human form. A wise person said that there is good, there is absence of good, and there is evil. If you claim to be a good person, it's not enough. And you are aware that people are burning things every day. People in the evil community and people in the absence of good community. They are birthing things with innovative solutions that will send the trend for culture. And whether you are good or not, you would have to what? Succumb to that and go in that direction. And that's why I want to let you know that there's an agenda and God is also raising men who can understand his agenda and can go front his agenda. I believe that never has it been like a time like this for us to recruit, for us to disciple, for us to dis and, and deploy men into our territory to take uh, territories for God. And this is the time for God's agenda on the earth. I want to especially invite you to Kingdom Advancement Conference 2023, organized by Dr. Dari Akilaja of Yaba Global Network. There are great speakers that are going to be there and great worshipers. I think that this is not the time for us to sit down on the pews of our churches or doing religion or dealing with the internal dynamics. I think it is time for us to be able to deal with the external dynamics of the kingdom and deal with prophecies and policies at the same time. I can't wait to see you there. I'm excited. Make sure you register on the screen with the address posted there. I would love to see you there. God bless you. Because they are angels sent to me. So we must understand that I wanted, I wanted you to have that perspective. Now you read verse 3 for me. One, two, go, everybody. So you can see they are human beings. Hot meat. Hot meal. Verse 4 to 5. Before this went to bed, men from all over the city of Sodom Young and old descended on the house from all sides and they boxed them. They yelled to Lot, Where are the men staying with you for the night? Bring them out so we can have our spot with them. You know what they call spot? Spot? So, spot there. They just don't want to use a vulgar word so that we can have sex with them. That's what it means. When you read, and Abraham is spotting with his wife, don't think they are doing tente or sway. Or they are they no, they are having you know, so now so I'm trying to point you to where homosexualism started from. These were men. These were men that had two fine boys came to Lord's house and they said, "Bring them out. We want to spot openly." They were not so. I'm, so there's nothing happening now eh, that is not that does not have a prophetic hedge in the Bible. These ones came openly. They were shouting publicly, "Send us these men." Good. Where are the men staying with you for the night? So bring them so that we can have our spot with them. Verse 6, read 6 to 8 for me. One to go. <laughs> now you begin to wonder what kind of man is Lot. But he received men as angels. And honestly, he understands why he was living there. I don't know why he chose to go live in Sodom. He relocated because he thought that place was a good place. And his source of sustenance in Sodom were, are these things that you are saying. Homosexualism, you see um, um, a wayward lifestyle. You see, So sex was not a big deal. So he could say, I would give you my daughters. He even said, my daughters are virgins. I will give it to you for free. It just tells you the Nollywood movie called Sodom. That it's not a big deal that if you take my own 
my own daughters. Did you finish it? Verse 9. They said, get lost. You drop in from nowhere and now you're going to tell us how to run our lives. Sodomy. We will treat you worse than them. And they charged past the Lord to break down the door. Verse 10. But the two men reached out and pulled Lot inside the house, locking the door. They struck blind the men who were trying to break down the door, both leaders and followers, leaving them groping in the dark. Now read verse 12 to 13 for me. One to go. One set to Lord. He said to blast this place into oblivion. Verse 14. No, Lot went out and warned the fiancés of his daughters. Evacuate this place. God is about to destroy this city. But his daughters would be husbands. They treated it as a joke. You see the danger of marrying somebody who is not spiritually strong? Who is not sensitive? They thought it was a joke. Say, show why many. How can you destroy America? How can you destroy London? We left Nigeria to come here. You can't know. You can't destroy it. You can't destroy it. Yeah. Verse 15. At break of day, the angels pushed Lot to get going. Hurry. Get your wife and two daughters. I was wondering when he was telling the men, I will give you my two daughters, where his wife was. Now they introduce his wife. Get your wife and two daughters out of here. Before it's too late and you are caught in the punishment of the city. This is a true example of what is called sodomy. Now, if I'm going to explain sodomy to you, I will tell you sodom is a system. Just like Babylon is a system. Sodom is a system. Can I have my slides? Number two, that system is characterized by sexual sin characterized by rape, characterized by homosexualism, characterized by violence, and many other things. It is a structure put by the enemy to sway, dissuade, and persuade kingdom people, righteous people, to subtly engage in things that appeal to their senses, and will make logical sense even in their times. It is a system that affects the feelings of men and the behavior of modification around men that men and women can begin to understand what is called the impulse of the body and how they can begin to succumb to the things that were not natural even from the beginning. It's called Sodom. So in this first service, I will share with you about 10 things about the system called Sodom. Number one, Sodom is an ultra-liberal society. Ultra-liberal society. So a society can either be liberal or conservative. Now, a conservative society is a society that treats everything with modesty. A conservative society will pay attention to building things, building people. Now, a liberal society is the direct opposite of that. A liberal society will do all he can to ensure that he goes against everything that is happening with the conservative. Everything is wild. Everything is loud. Everything is a show off. Now, I now call this ultra liberal society. So, the word ultra liberal society simply explains one thing. Have you seen this drink called Sprite? How many of you remember Sprite? Do you know the tagline of Sprite? Can you remember the tagline of Sprite? The tagline of Sprite is obey your thirst. Then they bring out the drink like this, and you see from the mouth, the, you see the gas moving. I mean, you see the advertisement. Obey your thirst. Now, obey your thirst. In advertisement, they're just trying to tell you this is Sprite. And when you are thirsty, you get Sprite and drink. 
But I hope you know that the people who put up that together are men who are psychologists, who are brand strategists, and they understand that beyond that, it could also mean something else that appeals to your sensual sense. So if I'm going to say, for example, obey your thirst, it means that I can also explain that it means obey your flesh. Obey your flesh means whatever your flesh is thirsty about, you can get it. I'm telling you how what is called higher, higher use of words that require higher thinking skill or higher other thinking skill to understand what a man or a woman is saying around something that appears logical. So you should ensure that, I mean, don't you have the slide? I wanted to show you a few things. Obey your thirst. It means anything your thirst wants, you go for it. All boundaries of morality removed. All structure removed. This, if you go to the, many countries today, Nigeria, no matter where we are, we are still warming up. There are countries where you know that this thing I'm saying, I'm saying you need to see how people sundate themselves. You need to travel during times in other countries and see how people just want to get sun or people just want to get off the rain and you will tell yourself, what exactly is this? It's a system. A wise person said that there is good, there is absence of good and there is evil. If you claim to be a good person, it's not enough. Are you aware that people are burning things every day? People in the evil community and people in the absence of good community. They are birthing things with innovative solutions that will send the trend for culture. And whether you are good or not, you would have to what? Succumb to that and go in that direction. And that's why I want to let you know that there's an agenda and God is also raising men who can understand his agenda and can go front his agenda. I believe that never has it been like a time like this for us to recruit, for us to disciple, for us to dis and, and deploy men into our territory to take uh, territories for God. And this is the time for God's agenda on the earth. I want to especially invite you to Kingdom Advancement Conference 2023, organized by Dr. Dari Akilaja of Yaba Global Network. There are great speakers that are going to be there and great worshipers. I think that this is not the time for us to sit down on the pews of our churches or doing religion or dealing with the internal dynamics. I think it is time for us to be able to deal with the external dynamics of the kingdom and deal with prophecies and policies at the same time. I can't wait to see you there. I'm excited. Make sure you register on the screen with the address posted there. I would love to see you there. God bless you. a system. Number two. Now, so this is one of those teachings in the month that you know I won't quote too many Bibles. Once I read the Bible, I just start teaching. So, sodomy over celebrates sexual perversion. Sodomy over celebrates sexual perversion. When you see a generation running towards sexual perversion, it tells you that there's about to be a Sodom replay like you saw in Genesis chapter 19. It will grow suddenly. Then suddenly man wakes up to the reality that I cannot be covering who I am again. It was first man with woman. Then suddenly it became man with man. That they came to the house of a righteous man, knocked his house, and Lord says that in the affairs of policy, it is better you sleep with a woman, sir, than you, than you should sleep with a man. Both of them are sin. But why not choose a better one? You see the logic? He said, I don't even mind giving you my daughters. Have you noticed that every advertisement in these times have strong sexual overtones? Have you noticed it? Sometimes you see an advertisement and the taglines and the words around it so sensual and they don't have a direct conversation with the picture they're trying to paint. But guess what? Somebody wants to mess up with your mind. People want to get into your mind. 
And when they get into your mind, they will set the trend for you. Sodomic system. Listen, you can get a job serving a sodomic agenda and you will never know. And you will say you are doing brand navigation and brand, you just look for an English word around what you studied in school. But you can be working out the agenda of the enemy. That's why when I, did, when I treated a similar series last year, I told you, why are you doing what you are doing? Remember how I analyzed WHO and a few things in the United Nations and what is going to happen in the end time with all of those things. Trust me, I interact with them. I just spent two of my days this week in United Nations meeting. Very high profile meeting just because I want to understand a few things in the system. So I don't treat, I don't, I don't treat theory. I tell you exactly what I have found in the system. And because I'm on an agenda, I'm not there to be part of them. I'm there to see the system and leak out a lot of things from it. You will see adverts that have nothing to do with what they are saying. What was a girl in bikini, busting looking girl in bikini, showing the breast and the, and, and the other part just because you need, to, you need to show how to use a perfume. What is the correlation? You want to tell me how to use a perfume? I can use, but they are, they are appealing to your, to, your, to your sensual senses. And you know, we are becoming sensual beings. And we forget that we are from a kingdom. How many of you will watch Christian movies? It doesn't make sense. There are movies produced just to affect your, your mind. And let me tell you the truth. Movies are more powerful than preaching. You see what I'm doing now? It's not as important as watching a movie. As I'm talking now, you still be doubting this guy. What's he saying? When you're watching a movie, subtly, it just enters into your mind. I've been seeing a movie now for three months. Only God knows the year I'll finish it. It's called Green Leaf. I mean, you look at some things and say, my God, what exactly are these guys thinking? It's a very long series. I don't know if I can finish this here. You know, I probably pick one. I use it to sleep. You know, so, because I'm not very good at movies. So when I do 20, 30 minutes, it gets me into the mood to sleep. Man. What exactly are they thinking? Even Nigerian producers. I see some movies. I say, okay, I, so are you trying, what are you trying to say? You, you're done with a movie, the devil is glorified. But your sensual senses are excited. Obey your flesh, sprite. Obey your test. You should just be obeying your test. Whatever you are testy about, just go. Obey it. Number three. Sodomy represents diabolical mismanagement. And I'm going to tell you the influence of diabolism from two perspectives. Number one, from the perspective of seeds. And number two, from the perspective of resources. Perspectives of seed and perspectives of resources. Why would there be strong sexual perversion in these times that we are in? See, and I hope, I hope you don't know what I'm saying. Every one of us, I'm not, see, every one of us is involved in this movie. Are you getting me? So you, as I'm preaching, you'll be thinking of certain people. It's us because it's a generation thing. It's a generation thing. And it's one of the signs of the end time. That there's going to be a Sodom replay. Why would Sodomy become strong in this time? Listen, the devil understands that there's going to be a rise of Josephs. And there's going to be a rise of Daniels. And most importantly, the rise of apostles and prophets. I remember how I defined apostles and prophets last year. Not necessarily somebody who has big beards and all of that. So you can go back and, and, and pick up those, those series. Exactly last year. Very simple. They know that these ones are God's arrow sown into the future. Or sown into the future. Guess what? The devil would rather use sexual perversion to kill the future of those apostles 
and the prophet. You will just wake up in the time in our generation where just something is missing. Can't somebody just have this power to do this? Can't just have, you see, you know when COVID happened, you know, and all of us, even with all our prophecies and our spiritualism, it, it slid past us. Many of us couldn't get it even spiritually. It just meant that something was missing in our generation. You see, sometimes when you think of something missing like that, it means that somehow the devil that launched an attack and the person for that assignment had to slid into something else. May you not miss your mission in this generation in the name of Jesus. Your amen sounds like you're not ex- What of resources? The devil is going to walk on bringing luxury to people. Now, so it's not going to be, it's not going to be that you're now poor. I mean, and honestly, between the devil and God, if you're poor, that's now your business because it's not, it's not the devil. It's not God. It's personal decision. Right now, the devil is going to partner with you to be rich because there's an agenda. What, of what use is poverty? Of what use? To the devil, to God, to you. No use. So the devil would rather partner with you. I mean, how can you be on mission with the devil and you've got no box? Who will be, be, be footing your abuse? The devil wants to work with smart people. That's why I told you that, come on, that the devil has rebranded. The devil is not in the falling down on the chairs again and you break in chairs, you break one here, you, you, you buy it next week. It's not in that again. The devil is not in policy formulation. It's in the culture. It's, it's in the systems. Influencing you. So go to church. Come back on Monday morning. We are going to train your mind. Monday to Friday. By the time we are done with you, Monday to Friday, against just Sunday morning, two hours. You to check. I'm telling you why Sunday you will feel God. Monday to Friday you will be out of God. You On Jesus' moment. A system. I remember I told you, I think we spoke a little bit about, about Naramali last year. I told you Naramali is not a human being. Naramali is a system. He's a face of a system. If you kill that man, there are many Naramalis, including people here, who carry the spirit of Naramali. That's how a system operates. It spreads. Glory to God. Glory to God. They will rather accumulate luxury than use it for kingdom advancement. Let's move on very fast. Sodomy involves a representation of you gotten financial resources. Now, one of the things you are going to see is that a lot of people that, in continuation of what I just said, the devil is going to partner with you to get good money. As far as the money is not going to be for the forgeries of the gospel, he would give it to you. And honestly, you actually don't need God. Are you getting me? To get money. You just need your brain. You just need your brain. Is that left for you to loop in kingdom agenda around what you do? I'm going to talk about, the second side is going to be very interesting. So let me just use this one for this first service, guys. I'm going to talk about how to sanctify polluted money. Yahoo boys, we need that message. I'll show you in the Bible. Ill-gotten financial gains and resources. You see the rise of such politicians. Accumulation. You see the rise of Yahoo boys. The rise of Yahoo plus. You see the rise of prostitution. Pim stars. And these guys will be loaded with money. You see, if you're a righteous person, you now look at yourself. Somebody not serving God. And me that I'm serving and I'm poor. See, forget it's not in the hand of God. That one is your brain. So it's not whether you are righteous or this. Because sometimes I, I see Christians compare themselves to the righteous. So how can the prostitute be riding a very good car? Me, I'm still doing keke. Oh boy, that's your, that's your brain problem. It's not God's problem. It's not God's problem. He's giving you brain so that you can give him rest. Glory to God. Glory to God. Number what? Number five. So do me. Is a prophetic picture of the Antichrist. 
Now, I did not say that is the Antichrist. Is the prophetic picture of the Antichrist. So, the devil, so Antichrist in English just means anything against Christ. Get everything, but just be against Christ. Get the titles, get the positions, get the job, get the fundings. Just be against Christ. Everything but against Christ. Against Christ. That simply means that we are in the times where people will be ashamed of the gospel. That's one of the signs. People are going to be ashamed of the gospel and they are Christians. So it means that if you are here and you are subtly so some of you left your house this morning and said, you go to church? No, I'm not going to church. There's a seminar happening in Yaba. I don't quickly get there. It's a seminar. Yes, it's a seminar. It's a conference. I told you one day how we're in a dinner. i never forget it. I must have said it more than a hundred times. We're in a dinner. In a corporate dinner. And I just asked this chap, please can you take an opening prayer? Let's just open this dinner. It was a circular dinner. But I said, can we have this dinner? The guy said, no, no, I'm, I'm a Christian, but I don't do Jesus, Jesus things. So what's the meaning of that? He now pointed at me, said, you see that guy here? He said, Jesus, Jesus. You're a Christian? You don't do Jesus, Jesus things? That's spirit of Antichrist. Anybody who is ashamed of the gospel is in that system. If you are ashamed of the gospel, you are under the system of sodomy. You cannot boldly declare your faith. You cannot boldly say, I am a Christian. I'm not talking about your perfection. I'm talking about you boldly declaring Christ. Declaring your stand. Then you're under a system. You are working for an agenda that you are not aware of. Huh. Number two, apart from those who are, who are ashamed of the gospel, you see people who are opposing the gospel. Those are the people that you like all their posts on social media. Opposers of the gospel. The sodomy. You see Philippians 4.19 as a thread. It just looks boring to you. You flip up. You won't even finish reading it. You flip up. The one sodomite will post something that is already on 24,000 likes. Appeals to your sense, it's your sensual senses. You even write, Can I like this 10 times? No, I'm just telling you, see, your desire, your delight shows the system you're operating. Your delight shows. Your delight. How will a day go without you, without you, without you liking or posting on, 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 on Tunia Not and all of those guys? How many Christian gospel, gospel threads do you, do you share, do you post? It looks boring. It looks boring, right? So do me. Number six. So do me represents satanism. And with that, I'm talking about infiltration of witchcraft in the times that we are in. I mean, that's something that is now persuading the Western nations. I hope you know that top CEOs now use jazz. When you rise in a level with resources, you, it just dawns on you that you need protection. You see, that's why I said the devil will partner with you. You need resources. You get resources, you get to a point. You will need, you will need to be protected. Then somebody sells the source of protection to you, subtly. You see, I know people that do jazz and they are deacons in churches. You see, the real, you see, and let me tell you why they do that. It's just for, um, to balance up physiological status or social status. So the idea is this. The person that really protects you 
uh, is living in a village and sitting on the floor. You understand? And that's the person that is your pastor, your real pastor. You know what I'm saying? Your real pastor. But you cannot come out on social media and bring that Baba's face out and say, my man of God. You know, it, it does not, I mean, it does not appeal to the senses. So you would have to look for one church. You understand? Where you're not connected to, but you just attend there once in a while. That's the one you post, and you know, just for um, what they call media appellation. So they can see that you are connected, but the real, your real, some of you now, you know, I'm not your real pastor, you know. You know. And those that will watch the replay of this, you know. You know where they are. No, go and check people that make them rich now. And see where they live. And you went to school. You have masters. The person that made you rich sat down on the floor. They put you on the chair. Well done. You leave. You, you come. You sit down on beer ground. And they make you. When you leave, you stand. Come on. And why are these things happening? It's because you don't have so much of Daniels. And you don't have so much of Josephs in the workplace. Men who will be fathers to Pharaoh. Tell your neighbor what agenda are you working for? Or are you just floating? Number seven. Sodomy represents the spirit of Babylon. I'm not going to speak so much about that. Because... How many Christians really rise by the power of God in a workplace? How many? That they rise by the power of God. Forget testimony. You see, is that same psychology of going to see one Baba and identify with another church and put that one on your status and not put the real person? So you get, the, the Baba gives you, you rise by the hand of Baba, then you share the testimony in church. I don't know what happened. So you can see why we don't, we don't allow people to come and share testimony on stage. Not because, you see, we glorify God. We'll rather record your testimony or read it out. We'll first check it. Because sometimes, you know, there's psychology around it that by the time you listen to somebody's testimony, 10 things can happen to you. Number one, you can go back home with low self-esteem, partly because you now know the person. I know the kind of result the person is coming. Number two, you don't even know what produced the result and the person came to confuse you. Number three, some don't even know that the, in their, in, there's a covenant in their family that backs them up to produce results. That they have one mother or one grandmother that sits on something for them. They too, they say, I don't know what I did. I just got there and I got four promotions in, in three months. It has never happened. I, I want to give the Lord thanks. That, 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 that now becomes your own, your own motivation. You're not going to pray and fasting. My God, divine favor. You see how you are confused. That's why I preached the message. Same God, different dealings. You can't use a man's dealing to check out your dealing. I will declare you are the only God. Do you want to sing that? The, the only God. The only God. The only God. I will declare. will happen because there's an agenda of sodomy in a generation. You, you don't understand how this system corrupts men. Let me, let me give you a little insight. Did you know that Abraham used his wife for, for prostitution? Did you know? It's a system that makes a righteous man 
behave like that. I will show you it was three times it happened in the Bible. Three times. Father Abraham. That Paul wrote and said that never staggered at the promise of God. I said staggered. He fell. You are still talking about staggering. Three times he used his wife for prostitution. You see, if you ask Abraham, he wasn't even sure what was happening. It was a system that was working on his mind. It was a system. You know, one day they came to meet him and they said, take this gold and silver. Peter, Abraham said, I will not take this one again. Lest they say they made Abraham rich. You know the meaning of that? He has been collecting it. I'll show you in the circumstances. This, see, the way a system operates is so powerful that you will still be praying in tongues. Sir, you will wake up, you'll be worshipping. And your tongue will be smooth. But when you are out of that place, you are coming to bow to the system. You see why I say that it is not enough to say Jesus is Lord. It's not just enough for you to receive salvation. Your environment and the systems around us must also be saved. Because you will lose your salvation that you got genuinely. Not because you don't want to serve God. But there's a way the system can frustrate you, culture you, and program you. It takes a lot to stay as a believer in the times that we are in. It takes a lot. It takes a lot. The only reason Joseph was able to, you know, when that babe said, sleep with me, you know, the babe did not write text, so it wasn't WhatsApp. It was, you understand? So do me. You know, so, some, some, somebody can hear that and say, my God, is that how, how handsome I am? That they're just, you know, you can go back and begin to look at yourself and say, wow. And then they rush me. <laughs> go and read that book, Dancing at the Gate of Hell. It will bless you. It takes a lot to rise above seductive influence. It takes a lot. When I say seduction, not just sexual, even money, even power. Power is seductive. Money is seductive. Everything is seductive. It takes a lot to rise above it. That is why men must have the mentality of being a king and a priest. That's the only antidote to that system. The only antidote to that system. I know we've been preaching that for a while. That you must understand that you are first a priest, not first a king. First a priest, then a king. The priesthood of Joseph. Guess what he was helping him to do? He became a god to Pharaoh. That's the system that was supposed to culture him. He became a god over that system. Let me show you that scripture. Genesis 41. Quickly. Are, our time is gone. Genesis 41 verse 25. Maybe we'll read 25 to 33. We'll find. You see a statement I'm looking for there. Joseph said to Pharaoh. Pharaoh's two dreams both mean the same thing. God is telling Pharaoh what he is going to do. Verse 26. Let's be fast. There are seven healthy cows. So now he was trying to explain the dream. So go to 27 now. Say that the same dream. So there are six. Go to 28. The meaning is that what I said, God is letting Pharaoh in on what he is going to do. Verse 29. Quickly, we're going to take it down to 33. 29. Seven years of plenty on the way throughout Egypt. Yes, this is him interpreting dreams. So these are the kingly dimensions of Joseph. He was interpreting dreams. So on the job, he knew the job. It's not that he didn't know the job. He was just praying in tongues. On the job, he was interpreting dreams. The CEO said, this is what we want to do. He said, don't worry. I will come back. I will interpret what you want to say. CEO, sir, this is exactly what you are saying. This is what you are saying. This is the revenue you want us to meet. This is the strategy to get it. This is how we're going to be productive. He was interpreting dream. So it's not that he's the one that's coming and waiting for salary and is begging whether they will sack or not. No. He became a god over the system. Interpreting dreams. That's supposed to be your job. That's the only way you will not be affected by sodomy. Is this making sense? Go to verse 31. There wouldn't even be a scrap left. Okay, we're still interpreting dreams. 
the fact it's like see, it's like him. This this scripture is like proposal. He wrote a strong, powerful business proposal and told CEO, "This is the way this country will go." When the when the when the man saw it, when the president saw it, he said, "No, there's nobody as smart as this man." He said, "From today, Joseph, you will, is only entitled to that I will be higher than you." Today, you are now actually the president and the vice. He became a king over Sodomy. Go to verse. Verse 32. So Pharaoh needs to look for a wise and experienced man and put him in the country. There's a place he said, I've made you a God unto Pharaoh. Look, look for that scripture for me quickly. Somebody look for me. Where he said, I've, I've looked, I've, I've made you a God unto Pharaoh. Is it because we're using message? Huh? 26. You said? I can't hear you. So he operated as a, as a priest. So he became a God to Pharaoh. Number two, he, he operated as a king where he was interpreting the dreams, he was interpreting the proposals, he was interpreting the business plans for the organization. Genesis 45. Go to 45 or 7 to 8. It's not Moses. Is it Exodus? Go to Genesis 45 first. Verse 7 to 8. There's something my spirit wants to pick in that place. Then I may, I may come to you, Exodus. Genesis 45. Verse 7 to 8. God sent me on ahead to pave the way and make sure that there was a remnant in the land to save your lives in an amazing act of deliverance. Verse 8. So you see, it wasn't you who sent me but God. He set me in place as a father to Pharaoh. Pharaoh is not a man. Pharaoh is a system. I became a father to a system. I was not cultured under the system. I was not a victim of the system. I grew in the system, but I became a father to Pharaoh. That's one of the most powerful assignments of this church. That God is going to raise men and women. You will not just celebrate them in the system. They are going to be fathers to the system. Babylon will have no power over us. Sodomy will have no power over us. You don't believe you think they are coming in second service. It's not you, right? I said they will have no power over us. He said, He has made me a father to Pharaoh, put me in charge of all his affairs, made me ruler of the entire Egypt. Of the entire Egypt. Of the entire Egypt. Please, be careful of the system. Understand the system. Come with the mentality of a priest and a king. That's the only way you can escape it. See, you can get salary increment over an agenda. You will rejoice before God for two hours. Share testimony in church. Give to the poor. Pay tithe. But you never knew it was an agenda that informed the increment. It's just that, you see, in a church we cannot talk deep. I can open up certain things in institutions and organizations to you, but I can't do it in church. At least you'd have paid me to two million first, even if they are going to send me to jail. <laughs> so if one of you had paid me to two million, I know that, okay. I used to bail myself out. Your offering can't bail me. <sighs> you are called to be a father to the system. Please don't lose yourself. Don't lose yourself. Don't lose yourself. The system is a very powerful one. I'll continue in the second service. Have you been blessed? Put your hands together for the Lord this morning.